This is the story of the light-up dance floor built for Fernal Equinox 2017. We wanted a light-up dance floor, but we didn't want to rent one. They're just too expensive. We came up with a design and built this prototype. Our design seemed to work. The prototype could take the weight. It looked really good too, once the LEDs were installed. Not long after that, we ordered 55 LED strips from China. We're using the 12 volt strips because they're cheaper and 12 volts is easier to work with. We also ordered a cheap power supply from China, but unsurprisingly it wasn't very good. A TNC 3.1 was chosen for the main driver board. With an Ethernet module, it can receive the ArtNet control protocol directly from software such as Jinx or any lighting console. Sometime around this point we decided that the floor should also be interactive. 300 microswitches were ordered from China. A circuit board was designed for everything to plug into. The first prototypes were hand soldered, and the final boards were assembled on donated time with a pick and place machine. Here's how that process works. First, solder paste is applied to the board through this steel stencil. The boards are loaded into the pick and place machine. The machine looks for the fiducials with its camera to line up the board. Now each part is picked up in turn and placed on the board. The parts arrive on paper tape and are advanced automatically by feeders. The solder paste helps the parts stick to the board. The machine has been trained with exactly where to place each part. Each part is first shown to the camera so it can be rotated if needed, before it is placed. When the board is finished, the machine ejects it. Now the boards are loaded into a hot air reflow oven which bakes the solder paste at specific temperatures to adhere the parts to the board. And with that, 75 boards were built. A second prototype dance panel was built, showing the new boards are working great we built a third prototype to refine our mechanical design. The pick and place machine was only capable of assembling the surface mount components of the board. All the other components had to be hand assembled by a dedicated team of volunteers. The HackLab's laser cutter was used to create the acrylic pieces that hold the micro switches up. Each acrylic panel took 8 hours to cut and there were 6 panels. A 200 amp, 12 volt power supply was ordered and a nice case was built for it. We had to use a cheater cable to plug in at our testing location since it required 208 volts. Wood cutting day. A team of eight volunteers spent 16 hours planing, cutting, routering, dadoing, and drilling pieces of two by three lumber. Over a thousand cuts were made. The next day, another team of volunteers screwed and bolted all the pieces together, while a different team painted the insides of each box white, for better light reflectivity.
The outsides of each box were painted black. In total, 64 boxes were built. The laser cut acrylic pieces for the switches were assembled and glued together, and then the switches attached. Wires were cut to length and connectors crimped onto the end. In total, 256 switch assemblies were built. Each LED strip was cut into lengths of 30 LEDs, and then wires soldered between the sections to make extended strips of 120 LEDs. These LED strips were then installed inside the boxes built the day before. A large team of volunteers spent most of the day doing this. Next, circuit boards were installed in each box, followed by the switch assemblies. We were finally ready to complete the assembly of the floor. The panels were laid out and bolted together, and the electrical components finished. The first hard lesson was learned at this point. Despite each panel testing good during the build, once placed on the floor there were many electrical connection problems with the LED strips. Each one had to be located and repaired with a soldering iron. Despite these and a few other issues, overall, the floor worked, and it looked incredible. The next several weeks were spent tweaking and testing, and programming the firmware and creating graphics for the floor. Just for fun, a version of Dance Dance Revolution was coded specifically for the floor, with the ability to support 16 simultaneous players. Before long, it was time to disassemble the floor and bring it to the convention. Many hours were spent taking it apart, loading it, and then putting it back together. Finally, after 11 months of effort, it was time to put it to the test, and it passed.